Welcome to another Sigma Life Hangout. Today we have the pleasure and the honor to have with us Dr. Gunilla Helf, um, Energy Security Specialist, Researcher. Welcome. Thank you so much. Welcome to Cyprus as well. Thank you. What brings you to Ireland? I have um, a lecture today and I'm very much looking forward to that on the subject uh, we are going to speak about and also to meet uh, Cypriot researchers. And what is the topic <coughs> you're going to be talking on? I will be talking on the new Russian policy in the north. So many people are aware of what Russia is doing and what everyone is doing in uh, uh, Syria and Ukraine and many other places, but less is known about the Russian policy in the Arctic and in the Baltic Sea region. So less is known f for the uh, northern borders of the EU in general. Yes. So what's the, what's the situation there right now? The situation in the far north, uh, which is very much dependent on the climate change which is ongoing, is that uh, Russia has a new strategy for the Arctic region and this strategy has uh, three uh, different uh, important uh, uh, areas. One of them is the new sea lanes of communication to which Russia has given much hope. Uh, another one is uh, the uh, deposits, huge deposits of oil, gas and minerals north of Russia, mm -hmm. which will now be available also with the climate change. And the third one, which is also quite important, is the security uh, development. Uh, Russia is now um, deploying two brigades, that is several thousand men in the north, uh, they are also uh, reinforcing old uh, or previously existing bases in the north. And uh, this has given a different character to the north. Uh, there are, as always, uh, nuclear submarines there to which Russia pays m much attention. But the extensive militarization of the north is the cause of some worries among the Nordic countries. We are used to seeing this region as a very peaceful and calm and uh, it's, uh, it's seen with some grave concerns uh, among the Nordic countries. But why is this <coughs> happening? Why, I, I dare to say, sudden militarization of the area? We hadn't had reports or any um, complaints over that before. This is something new. Why is it yes. happening? Yes, it is new. Uh, according to uh, uh, President Putin, the Arctic is of immense importance for Russia, technologically, economically, environmentally, and also security-wise. And for them, the Arctic is of vast importance. There is also another statement by Mr. Dmitry Ragosin, uh, who is an uh, advisor to Putin, who says that this is a continuation of uh, the policies that were pursued in Sevastopol and Crimea. It is about Russia as a great power. So it's a continuation of uh, rejuvenation of Russia in a new role, which Russia itself considers it hasn't had for some years. But <coughs> that, that is strange because Russia has been present, at least for the past decades, very present in all affairs around the world. So mm -hmm. for them to think that they have been left behind or that they have been humiliated by the West in any way, that might co cause some eyebrows, eyebrows to be raised. Mm -hmm. Why would they think that? Why would they act that way? I mean, the Arctic has been quite peaceful for yes. so long they could have pursued their, what they want, what they need, which is understandable in different ways, but militarizing an area like that, it's just a problem, it's just an explosion waiting to happen in the area. Yes, this is what we think too. And this is why the Nordic countries, who are the neighbors of Russia and situated far north, are worried about this situation. Have they addressed, have you addressed the, the problem as countries of the area? Um, Recently, Norway protested against it, but got a very uh, negative answer from Russia. So this is nothing they think we should be concerned about. Uh, but we do have other concerns as well, and this is about the Baltic Sea region, where our own region, 
where we have also met a very aggressive Russian behavior, which we don't understand either, because we don't think there is any reason. We are small countries, not threatening anyone, but we now see Russian airplanes making simulated air attacks on Stockholm, on southern Sweden, also on Denmark. And we are surprised, we don't understand it, we don't see the reason for it. Uh, not least we see what is called an information war on the Nordic countries where Russians uh, fake letters that look as if they were written by Swedish officials, Swedish uh, ministers, and with an atrocious content. And Isn't that illegal? Yes, I'm sure it's illegal. <laughs> I mean, for <laughs> no, someone to be doing <coughs> it so easily and yes. for us to be speaking about it so openly, people know. So people know. How, how is it getting by? How is it yeah. sliding by everyone? Well, it, it's rather strange because so much is known about it. We even know from where these letters emanate. The uh, latest ones have emanated in a special building in St. Petersburg. But they are so skillfully made, so they deceive. Uh, the recipients. Um, CNN was taken in by one of the letters and Wall Street Journal by another one, uh, which they actually thought were written by authentic Swedes. One was a minister, defense minister, another one was a, a higher ranking judge. And of course, both said no way would they have written a letter of that content. One of the letters was about Sweden helping um, Ukraine with uh, guns and the uh, defense minister was supposed to be congratulating them, which is absolutely <laughs> silly. Both things are silly. <laughs> but uh, we are not prepared for it in Sweden, uh, nor are other Nordic countries. So we have to build up a capacity to counter this uh, uh, information war. And not we start from zero. Not prepared in what sense? We have never met that kind of activity from any country before. We have to understand how so to... So it's uncharted waters for you? Totally, totally. As member states of the EU, have you turned to uh, any of the institutions to seek help in <coughs> dealing with the problem? Well, actually, the EU has started activities in uh, trying to come to terms with it. So there are people within the EEAS uh, who are working on it and under Federica Mogherini. So People are working on it. NATO is also working on it. And both Finland and Sweden are establishing closer contacts with NATO, uh, who have more, which have more, more experience in this, and to try to learn and know how to deal with it. Do you think that NATO's involvement is one of the um, ingredients of the problem? What I mean is um, we see NATO and EU and the US working closer and closer together yes. due to the crisis of the area. Mm. Uh, we said before that Russia might be feeling a bit left out mm. of the whole situation. Would you subscribe to the idea that maybe Russia is feeling that all the others, meaning EU, US and NATO, are closing in on, on the country yeah. and it's that this is its way of expanding and showing um, here and present Mm. I'm still one of you, of your caliber, let's say. Yes. Uh, actually, I think you, you are absolutely right. I think some Russians do have that feeling that we are closing in on Russia. But it depends on how you interpret events and how you interpret behavior. For us, what is happening in uh, when the EU expanded and when NATO expanded is that countries expressed their free will to join the EU or to join NATO. And that is the important uh, for the West. It's a value system. For Russia, it's perceived as a geopolitical situation. Uh, they perceive of their old empire, the Soviet Union, which they controlled. And it was also part of uh, Soviet Union being a world player. And then all these republics left Soviet Union, which disappeared and NATO and EU came in together. It's seen from that viewpoint. It is a geopolitical zero-sum game. So there are two value systems that are colliding, I would say. But 
excuse me, the ignorance or the naivete of my question, but isn't the time of empires long gone? Why would someone try to revive something like that? Mm -hmm. Disturb the balances in a way that no one knows where things can go from there. Yeah, I, I think that the time of empires is gone. We can have a system in the world where countries are free to decide their own fate. They can trade with each other in a way which makes everyone gain. And we can have a lot of uh, peaceful and uh, very uh, successful cooperation. And this is what was tried in the Baltic Sea, for example, in the 90s. There were a lot of new institutions there, all of them, in including Russia. Uh, but this is not how the present leaders in Moscow see the situation. Is this a setback for the peace achieved and the calmness and the prosperity achieved in the area? Absolutely. It's a great disappointment for us because we don't think that we have deserved the treatment we get from Russia today. Uh, of course, we have been very outspoken when it comes to Georgia, Ukraine and so on. But we think we have the right to be outspoken as well. Do the people of the peoples of these countries feel the threat? Is this a game that has gone into the population? We in the uh, are people fight. aware? Uh, do, yes. do people sense that something is wrong, or is it something yes. that we speak on, <coughs> on on an academic or a political level? Oh no, it's well known all over Sweden, uh, Finland, Norway, Denmark, uh, and. Uh, People speak about it a lot. There is a general unanimity about the fact that we have to rearm, which we have started to do, and which we all find extremely sad. But it's done. On the other hand, I, I must emphasize that the Nordic countries don't feel that they are under a military threat. Mm. So we, we don't think that Russia has any intention of attacking us. But they have an intention of making us perceive of how small we are compared to them. I think it's a lot about uh, showing that Russia is a great power, but they are doing it in a way that we are strongly negative against. You're not supposed to behave towards other countries in the way they do. Would you, did you accept, um, did you want more from the EU? Did you want more support? Did you want the institutions to be more outspoken um, for your part? Uh, no, not actually. The EU is doing what it can do. Uh, Sweden and Finland could join NATO if we want to, but uh, and this is something that is happening now. More and more people are positive towards joining NATO. We have an excellent cooperation with NATO, but uh, right now the present government in Sweden and Finland are not for joining NATO. Where do you see things going from now, from here? Sorry? Where do you see things going from here? Um, is this going to escalate? Are we going to, well, not in a military sense, but is this going to diffuse in some way? Is it, where do you see the situation going? We don't know. It's up to Russia, really. We hope that uh, it will calm down, mm -hmm. and we think that we are not escalating the situation by continuing to arm ourselves, because Sweden had a long period of very uh, great disarmament. So in order to feel safer than we were, we need to do some rearmament. But this is a, a sad moment of, sp we would like to spend our money on other things, but uh, right now we have to do it a bit. I think we could talk on the topic for hours and hours, mm -hmm. but unfortunately time is running out. Thank you so much for your time and your insight and all the information that you've given us on this not so known subject and topic of what's going on in the northern borders of the EU. Thank you so much for letting me come here. And thank you for watching.